Greatness is not what you achieve. Greatness is who you are. You just aspire to what you already are so that the world can see it. And there's a redefinition of greatness. We, I did the first part of this message so you can listen to this first part. Um, Matthew 20, verse 25 to 28 and um, Mark 9. Matthew 20, 25 to 28, the Bible says Jesus called them together and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the son of man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. In Mark chapter 9 verse 33 to 35, this is another scenario in the gospel of Mark. He said they came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, if anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last and the servant of all. Proverbs 11.25 in the New Century Version. The Bible says, whoever gives to others will get richer. Those who help others will themselves be helped. Those who help others will themselves be helped. Do you want help? Then help others. What you want more of is what you give out more. And so today I want to talk about the way to the top. I'm continuing it. There are 12 things that God wants, uh, Jesus, uh, the Bible says about service. But I want you to know that whether we like it or not, we are living by one guiding principle. That means you are living by one guiding principle. Underneath, the way you behave is because you have one guiding principle. There are people, they pray fire prayer, not because they want to pray, they are afraid. They have this theology, God is powerful, but devil, fear that guy. That thing is the one that propels their prayer. God is all powerful, but there is a way the devil can overpower the, devil, the uh, God. They don't say it. So, we either make an intentional choice to center our life on the principle, or we end up living by one by default. And I want to tell you there were two trees in the garden. There were two trees in the garden. One, the tree of life. Two, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There is nothing bad about these trees, but they are, they, these trees take you to an end. One of them is good. One of them will stagnate you. And God said, don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In other words, you cannot master life by mastering good and evil. You can't. Listen, the tree of life leads you to a full belly and the Shekinah glory of God, which is the full experience. It's either you are following the cloud or you are following the crowd. So we need that Shekinah glory. And that Shekinah glory is a mystery. And most people cannot center their life around mystery. Listen, how many of you, you want to know how you want to really have a grasp on, on, your, on your life for the next 10 years? Raise up your hand. You want, to, you, want to, you want that certainty. Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. You, just, you want to know, you want to, that certainty of your life. You want to get it. You don't want any surprises at all. Everything should be going. The way. Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. You're a big boy. You're a big girl. You see, that is the criteria for depression. It is. Because we want to have, that's why we take some decisions. Everybody is doing it, you do it. Because in that thing, there is this sanctity. Listen. Do you know how, stomach, how food digests in your stomach? You only read it. Where's your heart? Do you know how a, a baby is formed in a woman's womb? Huh? No, no. Are you? So there are things that God says, the universe is so vast that you don't need to figure it out. Trust me. 
Which means that you must have some things in your life that is mysterious to you. Have faith for it. But the knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil will tell you that there are some things I will give to you that there is certainty. And that's what the, that, was, that was what the enemy used. Don't mind God. There are some things he's holding out for you that if, if you eat this one, you will know it. Now, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil leads you to a full head. Your head is full and intellect, which is the sec- shekleton, which is being barren. When you eat the knowledge, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, what will happen is that you will be very intellectual. When you'll be talking today, they will say, look at this very intelligent guy. But intelligence has brought us to this stagnation now. That today, the people that thought they had all the bases covered for COVID, there was more death in those places than the people that did not prepare for it. Are you listening? A young man told me, he said, he said during COVID, I went for all the online training. Online training. He said, after COVID, I became confused. I don't even know where to start. Can't you see your head is full? Now, come to practical reality, there's a problem. He said, what if I start? A, a, a training said, be your boss. Another training said, serve to the top. Another training said, don't listen to anybody. Just stay. T- listen. And as long as we do not know that, True prosperity in his, is in his voice. You would, try, you would live your life by that default drive of trial and error. You see, it is scary and risky to follow God. And many of us don't want to risk. Okay, let me put it this way. To marry is a risk. Oh, you don't know. Every of the person's body is a depreciating asset. So, if tree of the knowledge and good and evil leads to barrenness, there is something that leads to fruitfulness. It's the Shekinah glory. Mikal was so intelligent about worship that I could not figure out how a king was dancing naked. And the king said, it's because the God that created me, I will fool myself. And you know what? Our intelligence brought her to barrenness. And in Isaiah 54, it says, sing, O barren. What is the connection between singing and breaking out of barrenness? There is no textbook that can define it. It's a mystery. Do you know that many a times we are telling people, stop praying. Prayer is over. Go and get your uh, PVC. Do you know what we did by saying prayer is over? That we have prayed too much. You clearly disobeyed Jesus. Jesus said men ought to pray and not give up. We became very intelligent. The question I need to ask now, how market? Life is mysterious. Just accept that fact and have trust in him. One thing I must say, 10 years ago you had all the plan. If 10 years ago the plan you had, everything is happening the way you planned it. You may have missed something, you may have missed God in your life. The Bible says make your plans counting on God to direct your path. Some of the things that you are doing now, eh? many of you will agree with me, many of you will disagree too. Because I'm not preaching a message to make you agree. I'm preaching a message to challenge you. I read books of people that don't even like their theology. Because if I read only what I like, I won't grow. Sometimes I read boring books. You know, you're, you're reading books, you're sleeping. Uh-huh. So I'm teach, telling you now to so challenge you to wrestle with it. Don't agree with me if you don't want to. But let us be friends. So, if Jesus asks you and I, 
Why are we following him? What will be our answer? Write it down. Why are you a Christian? <laughs> Do you know that now you don't even know <laughs> why you are a Christian? <laughs> so if I say, are you a Christian? Please don't be quick to answer that question. The thing you ask the person, what does Christian mean to you? Because if I say I'm a Christian, some of you will dog off. You don't want anything to do with Christians. Because they have defined what Christ is not to you. <clears throat> and every day, we should ask ourselves, do I have a reason why I'm following Jesus? Listen, one of the reasons you follow Jesus is that he should, he should protect you, true of us. Eh? He should kill some people for you that are your enemies. Eh? Three, it should open if you it should give you breakthrough. Huh? Eh? Yes, eh? yes, eh? yes, uh-huh. All these three things, is Jesus not serving you now? Is Jesus, Jesus protect me, you are my servant. Jesus keep my enemies for me. You are my fighter. Jesus, go and open doors for me. You are my gate man. Please, who is serving who? That's what Ogun does. Ogun protects you. Ogun kills your enemies for you. Ogun opens doors for you. So, he said that we are shriners. So, if, if Jesus does not open door for you, Does not kill your enemies. Does not give you children. What you got to do with Jesus? Have we defined Christianity the way it's not supposed to be defined? As we dig deep into this matter, you must understand that right now, we must ask ourselves, are you and I being the salt of the earth and the light of the world? Am I really salt? When I come to a place, is my taste sweet? When I come to a place, do I bring light to a disorganized and a dark environment? Whether in church or in the marketplace. When I, when I become friends with you, am I transformational or transactional? Because the two most important questions people are asking now on, all over the world, will I make heaven? What about the fate of homosexuality? As if homosexuality is bigger than gluttony. Mm. Which one is the greatest sin? Homosexuality or gluttony? When you eat from the knowledge of the, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Sin will now become an hierarchy. And your own sin is at the bottom. The main issue of Sodom and Gomorrah was not Sodomy, it was not homosexuality. It was one, they were overeating, gluttony. And two, they overlooked the plight of the poor. And the resultant effect was that they became selfish. And they needed to fend for themselves. That's what brought homosexuality. God said with in scripture more than over and over again, warned us about gluttony. If I too much of it. It warned us. Have you seen somebody that is morbidly obese? You have seen the person. And somebody say, be careful of that guy. You. Do you, you, they are your friends. You love them. But if they tell you somebody is homosexual, they say, where you look at the person? That if they say you should offer your seat to the person, say, God forbid. I don't validate all this type of stupidity. Sinners who are going to hell. And the question I need to ask, are you bringing hell or heaven to the place where you find yourself? When you talk about hell, there are four hell that was mentioned in the Bible. One was Sheol, which was mentioned in the Old Testament. 
and the remaining three were mentioned in the Bible, in the New Testament. The first one was Totoro, the second one was Hades, and the third one was Gehenna. So when Jesus said you will go into a place that is, uh, that, that there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, it was not the hellfire that's to come. Totoro was those places you keep angels who are disobedient. Hates are those people that, that the place they go when they reject Christ. Gehenna is here with you. What is Gehenna? There was a time they were sacrificing babies to Molech. You know Molech? Molech is the one that is a big giant statue with the hand wide open and created, made with steel. So they will heat it up by putting fire, burning coal in the back. It will be red hot and people will put their babies on top of their, their hand. Sometimes the babies will die but when the babies leave, there's a mark on their head and their bum. They will stay with that for life. It was Josiah that stopped that child sacrifice. Josiah became king at the age of six years. Do you know that he will have compassion on his mates? And he stopped it and they were asking, what do we now do to this place that Molech, they have been sacrificing babies? So they started using it as otiku, sorry, refuse dump. The refuse dump of society. So they were putting refuse there. Just as those days when we, we dug well. Now we are not using well again. We are now putting things to fill the well. Now, the only problem was that when the breeze comes into the town, it comes through that place. And the old town has a fragrance. The question I need to ask, what does your life bring to the... What, is there a fragrance that your life brings to the places that you are? Is it a bad smell or a good smell? And so what they decided to do was they started burning, burning it. That's why when you go to refuse dawn, you see fire is always there. Fire, because when the, when the, when the wind comes, if there's sulfur burning, it neutralizes the smell. And there are three things you will find there. Number one, you will find refuse dump. Two, you will find stray animals. They are looking for their food in there. And three, this was also a place where if you don't have money as a poor man, you bury your people there. So they will be crying there. So when they say there's weeping and gnashing, the question I need to ask, is your life in Gehenna here? So right now, where are you bringing heaven or hell to? Seven is a powerful way to bring heaven, especially the one that doesn't make sense to human reasoning. This is the pathway to the top and it guarantees greatness. Seven, seven is the way to the top. And quickly, I want to run through reasons for using your life to serve others. One, I said it in the first service, you were created for service. Two, you were saved for service. If, you were, if, you were, if God saved you and heaven was the ultimate, you would die immediately so that heaven will be guaranteed for you. Three, you have, you have been called by God to service. Four, you have been gifted for service. Five, you are commanded to serve others. It's a command. And six, service proves that you belong to Christ. Seven to 12 now. I want to give you another. Your church family needs your service. Your church family needs your service. You cannot be a spectator in a church. If you are in a church, in a local church, I, I assume some people are here because our sister and the husband, they are doing a thanksgiving for their parent. They have one of the parents that are going to be with the Lord. You are all here. You came to, to, to celebrate with them. But I want to tell you, any local church you belong to needs your service. You cannot be a spectator. It's not a football match. I know you are seated as if you are in a cinema hall, but it's not a cinema hall. It's a family. It's a family. I, I don't know if you understand. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27, in the Living, in the living Bible, it says, all of you together are the one body of Christ, and each of you is a separate and necessary part of it. Today, I'm standing here teaching you the word of God. When will you also save me? When your finger is paining you and you have weak glow, I hope you know you cannot sleep. Your eye will be open. Is it your eye that is paining you? Small tears will be coming out from your eye. Your eye is not, it's not. Your whole hand will be hot. Why? You are a separate but a necessary part. You cannot be receiving service and people are not getting your service. 
That's why I tell people, how many of you went to public school here? Raise up your hand. You went to a public school, university, secondary school, uh, uh, any university, whether public university, uh, state university or federal university, raise up your hand. I, I know you, if you don't raise up your hand, I'll come and raise up your hand. By you. you did not go. Primary school, secondary school. You raise up your hand now. Some of you are saying, I don't know what you want to talk now. All of you that raise up your hand, if you say anything again against Nigeria, <laughs> let me not place one wonderful, one wonderful thing on you. I was talking to a lecturer in Uniben. The wage bill for lecturers for staff in Uniben is one billion naira a month. A month, that's 12 billion naira for only salaries. Some of you, when you were going to school, you paid in a year 16,000 naira. Some of you, 5K. When I was secondary school, boarding house, we were paying 100 naira. They would feed us three times a day. They would give us foam and pillow to sleep. They would give us free book. Our life is subsidized in this country. How many of you pay for toll gate when you are walking, when you are driving around Benin? I calculated the fuel price in America, US. One liter of fuel is 1,500 naira. One liter. They have oil, though. I hope you know that. Before someone says, we got here. We got here. You know what? After you have paid 16,000, 40,000 naira, or 45, or even 50 in a year, in four years, if you are paying 50,000 naira, it's 200,000 for a full degree. 200K tuition. Then you will not go to NYC. They will not pay you back all the money. <laughs> they will pay you back all the money. Then if you are a medical doctor, you now do your internship on the seventh year. You are earning close to 200000 every month. And how much did you pay for your school fees in now in Uniben 60K? For six years. Masters now is 62000 naira. Masters. 62K. When we finish service, ask these two people, how much is their... How much do they pay there? They will tell you. Obama just finished, before he became president, he paid his, his student loan three years before he became president. And I'm sure because of all the books he wrote. The lecturer told me, he said, per student in Uniben, in terms of what the federal government gives, for every year, the federal government subsidizes with two million naira. So in four years, they paid eight million to educate you. If you went to a federal university, if you went to Uniben. Then Nigeria would give you, will give you 80 million as of five years or six years ago to go and do PhD in UK. 80 million naira for one person. Now tell me. When they brought back the Sudan, I'm telling you something you know, because we are going to save. They brought down the Sudan, uh, those people that came. Not that Nigeria sent them, or that their parents sent them. <laughs> when they came, the first set, they, give them, they gave them pocket money 100K, 25,000 Naira recharge card, 1.5 gigabyte uh, data. For what they did not send you. Neither am I saying it's bad for them to bring you. My friend was here from one of the countries that you want to go to during COVID evacuation. Because when I heard in, on TV, people were saying, eh, Nigerian people refuse to go and bring, Nigerian government refused to go and bring their, their citizens. They refused to go and bring their citizens abroad. They refused to go and I saw an email written to my friend from his government that, listen, we are going to come and evacuate you, but you are going to pay $1,400. 
for one-way trip, and they will drop you in a place like Abuja. How you get to Benin is your own business. Is your country still bad? Now, a question I need to ask. Are you good to your country? How much do you pay for light? Some of you bypass, like, you, you bypass as if you are, as if you are, as if you are, your, 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 your third name is bypass. So, we have raised up a people that are entitled. Entitled, and, and when nobody does something for you, you get angry. I they told my pastor, not if he pray for me, you they pray for pastor. I enter church. See where they go put me. Do, what are you doing in the church? Why you didn't put somebody there too? Entitled. Entitled everywhere. My friend was driving me in Dallas. Emmanuel Ojo, you know him. Went to see him. I will see on the road. They say, keep on driving. We'll bill you later. Keep on driving. I say, what is it? Why are you driving and keep on billing us later? He says, toll gate. If you like, you drive. You don't pay. The thing is deducting money. There are some places you want to be fast. You go and pass the place. He's told. A woman was just passing. Bri, 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 bri. After a time, they sent her a B, $5,000. That you pass road. Here they will do road. You will pass anyhow. You won't pay one toll. You won't pay anything. You just, you just from, you just from second, but you enter, you enter limit. From the limit, you enter uh, this thing. All the roads are everywhere. When it's bad, you say, and they know the, this thing. How many of you pay taxes in this country? How many? How many? The only people that pay taxes are those that work for government who they, they just take personal in contact and some companies that is coming. But hear me and hear me good. Taxes are coming. Get ready for it. If you are not going to get ready for it because oil is not producing money for us anymore. Okay, where did I start? Number eight. Number seven, I said, your church family needs your service. Number eight, serving others is the way to serve God. I've seen people say, ah, I, I serve God, I serve God. <laughs> you serve God. How do you serve God? Do you give him tea in the morning? You wake him. You serve God by serving others. That's the way you serve God. The people that were here, all the people that prepared this thing, cleaned the ground and did, the, and did everything. They may not even hear the message, but they serve God. Somebody one day told me, say, upon I serve God. Upon I serve God. I never get the breakthrough. You know, as a good guy, I've sympathized with him, calm me down. And when he was not smiling, I said, my brother, how you tell you serve God? Tell me how you tell the serve God. You that come to church late every for only 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 two hours service, you will come late. If you come to church every Sunday for two hours, eh, you have spent less than one week in church in terms of one hour, in terms of hours. Because one one week is 1,680 hours. Seven multiplied by 24. Two hours you will come late. My brother, you see, they serve God. And not even they see money. You not get anywhere when they serve. Now, we they serve you, my brother. Now, we they serve you. Started laughing. Now, we they serve you now. Please, can I ask you a question? How do you serve God? That you appear dressed as if you are going for a show. Now, you tell they serve God. Who have you visited in the hospital since? Can I call you that somebody is in the hospital for you to go and pray for? My brother, now you will deserve. My sister, I say now Jesus, I deserve you. <laughs> Some, the way we treat Jesus, we cannot even treat our servant like that. The Bible says in Colossians 3, 23 to 24, and whatever you do, do it heartily, as so to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. Your church family needs your service. 
Serving others is the way you serve God. Whether you, listen, some of you are believers. You are going to serve unbelievers in the marketplace. Serve them according to the Lord. Today, I see employers complaining about employees. And most of these employees, they speak in tongues. But they have a philosophy. Now, where did they walk? That's why they call them smart guys. So you come to work late. You even come to church late. Then everybody should understand why you should be late. Then you stand. Lord bless me. Entitled. Service makes life meaningful. Nine. Service makes life meaningful. When you are not serving, life does not make sense. You know, some people are saying, eh, I did my birthday, I did my father, nobody came. Our sister came from Canada to, to celebrate, uh, to do the uh, burial ceremony. And everybody were, why? She was connected to them. She tomo- she's still serving. When she was there, she was. So people know her. The question I need to ask you, in your church family, do they know you? When things happen to you now, who will come to you? Then when the thing is happening, you are calling pastor. Pastor phone switched off. And you know the funniest thing? Your family members that do not know how things work will come and ask you, you know get church? You say, I get you, they call my pastor, says you know they pick phone. <laughs> now the question you should ask, does the pastor even know you? Or are you a retiree? There are people that have retired from service. They are bigger than that. They will ask you. So you see they sing. Uh, we don't pass that. As if singing is for small boys. In Mark chapter 8 verse 35, the Bible says, if you try to keep your life for yourself, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will find true life. You will find true life. The call into this life that God has called you is not to comfort and convenience. It's an adventure. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 in the good news, it says, keep busy in your work for the Lord since you know that nothing you do in the Lord's service is, is ever without value. It's ever without value. The little, the person you picked up from the ground as you were ushering, that thing is never without value. Let me tell you, there's a dilemma between forgiveness and blessing. You don't do anything to be forgiven for salvation, nothing. It's a free gift. But for the blessing, there is something to do. It is called faith without works is dead. It is not the hearers that are blessed. It is the doers that are blessed. Some of you will be pressed now. You will go to the toilet. Somebody cleaned it. What somebody did for you, can you do for others? Can you do for others? Somebody swept the ground for you. Somebody cleaned the chair and arranged it the way for you to sit down. Somebody came very early to put on the gen and to put on the light and to make the place comfortable for you. Can we send you to a location for you to do that for others? Ah, 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 I beg, I know be pastor. God bless you. I am one. Everybody is called to serve. Everybody is called to serve. If we have this mind, when you are walking to a place and there's paper, you pick it up. Number 10. 
service proves that you owe everything to Christ. My life is not my own. If he has saved me, when I'm serving, what I'm saying is the Lord, you are the one that gave me this life. And I'm serving, I owe you my life. I owe you. I owe you. I'm here by the grace of God. I'm standing here by the grace of God. You see, when COVID hit, the most intelligent nation could not stand. And the ones who were calling upon God, that's why you have to be comfortable in mystery. They can't still understand how it happened. The prediction that millions, millions will die on the streets. So they were predicting that I will not see my wife again. They were predicting that I won't see these wonderful people again. Some people were even calling us from abroad, say, be careful, low. The prediction we have heard. Listen, science is at best discovery. The Bible does not fight science. Science discovers what has been there before. In Romans 12, 1, it says, because of God's great mercy to you, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to his service. Dedicated to his service. There are people that will be in the hospital today that will call you to go and visit. And you are about to sleep. And they will call you. Go and visit the person. One of the ways that will take you to Gehenna is not seeking out for those who are poor. For those who are in the hospital. Jesus said, depart from me. Depart from me. I remember one time, Pastor Peter, who is, the, who is in Oka now, he came to this place and he said, let me go to church one more time and I'll go and commit suicide. He walked up to the place, he came to the building. As he entered, he saw Pastor Enoma. Excited to meet him. Shook him and was very happy to meet him. He said, is it me? No, this man did not see me well. He went outside again. I came inside. An usher welcoming somebody by his what, not his behavior or his dressing. <laughs> made somebody not to commit suicide. And today is a pastor. He will remember where he was. Number 11. You will be held accountable for your service. What did you do with what God gave you? What did you do with his son? Are two questions they will ask you when we finally meet him. What did you do with my son Jesus? Did you reject him? He said, I accepted him. No problem. The gift I gave you to deploy so that heaven can come through you. What did you do with it? The Bible says in Romans chapter 14 verse 12, each of us will have to give a personal account to God. To what? Our stewardship here on earth. Our stewardship. Everything you have acquired, I know you worked out for it, but I can tell you, you are not the one that gave yourself power to work for the money. For it is he that gave it the power to make wealth. The places you are making profit, people are making losses there. I'm telling you, a young a woman told her he left here after not reuniting with the husband for 13 years. Got to a place and all the service she was doing in protocol, taking care of people, arranging the food the way it's arranged. She was doing it normally. She didn't know that the camera was watching her. And today, in the country that she was, she's doing a job and they are paying her for two places. Two, 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 ways, two positions. Because she's a leader and also a worker. They would have said, being a leader, let us recruit another person. But the way she took care, stayed and, who, and, and, and cared for somebody who could not care for. This is what was, she was doing normally as in, 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 in hospitality here. People will say, you see, they do hospitality, they follow people. Let people not dance you out of your breakthrough. Let them not talk you away from it. Anything that wants to remove your hand from service wants to kill you. Jesus said, for this reason I came, to serve. To serve. A servant can never be broke in life. 
A servant cannot lack friends. And a servant cannot be depressed. Number 12. Service will be rewarded for eternity. Service will be rewarded for eternity. Jesus said, my father will honor anyone who serves me. And how do you serve Jesus? You serve him by serving others. You serve him by serving others. That's how you honor. There are many of you here, let me tell you. Many of you think it's only church. Church is a place for practice. If you can practice where, we, yeah, when, when people will insult, some, some people, they're not getting joy. How can they have joy? Do they produce joy? They, do, they don't even like, like themselves. Why would they like you? And some of them are just seekers, spiritual seekers. They don't, they're still babies. And I can also put it to you, some people have been in the faith 15 years. One year experience repeated 15 times. No growth, nothing. When you tell them to sit down, they will eye you from, uh, they eye you, eye you, eye you, eye you. They will cut you. But let me tell you, if, they, if eyes could kill, you would have died before they saw you. Because people have eyed you, you are still alive. Tomorrow they will repent and come and tell you, I didn't know that you are like this. I didn't know you are like this. Meanwhile, they have used their bad attitude to drive you away from service. You will look at yourself. There are some of you. You are employers of labor. But you, you are coming here to serve one person. Then one small girl. Yeah, if you are not careful, you will get angry. What makes you get angry is that there is a sensor inside of you. And they have the remote control to control you. So when they press you, you must answer. You must answer. Be rewarded. And listen, let me tell you. When we talk about eternity, please. Don't think eternity is after it. Eterna. Eterna. I want. Go save my Baba. I want to live eternal life. Itana. Itana. Eternal life is done when you die. It's here to the other side. When you meet Jesus, eternal life has started for you. Because you are touching the power of eternal life. In other words, there's a reward here. When did you stop sweeping the floor in church? When? He said, Pastor, it's when I packed to one place. That means that you, you and you packed to a three-bedroom flat, then you were in one room, one room. You were very, very diligent. Now, comfort, I can't say, no, 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 no. They're the big pass on team. I hear so many kinds. <laughs> I hear so many kinds. <laughs> Is it a big pass on the big pass service? Nah. When people are contesting, say, we are presenting ourselves to serve you. Is that not what they said? But when we put them finished, they are not serving servants again anymore. The man is coming to tell you, marry me. He's begging, no. He's begging, say, eh, I will take care of you. Just follow me. <laughs> now you are, he has just agreed. Just see you finish. <laughs> will be rewarded for eternity. In Matthew 25, 23, say, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with, few, with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Can God trust you with little things? Little things. Some of the service we say we will not serve here. When they relocate, huh? You know what I will hear again? They say that one, they add money now. We will serve and yet they don't give us this thing. Let me tell you, it's mammon. If because of money you are doing what you don't do normally, 
then you are not doing it for love. You are doing it for money. And I, I want to ask you, can you do for love what you used to do for money? That's true service. There are many of you who have retired because of what people did to you. Please, we are going to pray for the healing of your heart. If you think that if you follow people, if you are in relationship, they won't hurt you, I'll be lying to you. How many of you are married here? Raise up your hand. Raise up. Have you, has your husband or your wife offended you before? <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Every day. But you, you, you both will tell yourself we die here. We are here. You are going nowhere. We, are, we die here. Why? You have found a way to be in one accord. You have found a way to be in one accord. Doesn't mean that you agree on everything. See, tomorrow, me and, there are some things me and my wife can never agree on. Yes. Like what I told her this morning now. I don't want to say, I don't want to be in trouble. I just want to say, there are things. In other words, as we are here now, there are things me and Joy cannot agree on. But can we still be friends? Why can we not agree? We see life differently. We prophesy in parts. But when we are together, the whole comes together. How can you be one and one alone? Where have you retired from service? Where have you retired from giving? Where have you retired from putting value? Is your relationship with other people transactional or transformational? When you come to a place like this, what value have you added? What do you think that God is putting in your heart to add to people? If that one does not become your reality, it's Jesus that is serving you. It is people that are serving you. There's reward for service. Reward every time for service. I will never retire from serving. I will serve till I close my eyes. Because the Bible says the laborer is worthy of his wages. Wages is variable. Salary is fixed. If they pay you salary, you like work for 24 hours, it's the same thing. But if it's wages... It varies with the time. It varies with th different things that come your way. i rather live by wages. And it's the only one that can pay. A young man gave a testimony here. Serving in the hospitality team. His father, not in this church, was going to do surgery. As they told everybody, they want to donate. People were calling everywhere. That is the issue of family. You know, when I say family, you have a different concept of family. But we have a culture called family here. I'd rather have families than to have a crowd that knows nobody. You can be in an airport and still be lonely. The place is busy, but you know nobody. Question I need to ask. My response is this. Teach me to serve you with complete devotion. Serve the Lord with gladness. Teach me to serve you with complete devotion. Where, am I, where will I be useful to a believer? Where will I be useful also to an unbeliever? I will be useful to an unbeliever by demonstrating the life of Christ to the person. Not only that, trying to, always looking for an opportunity to share the gospel with the person. An opportunity to share the gospel. You are not here only to make money and die. You are here. There are two things that will last for eternity. It will transverse from here. It will pass through fire to the other side. One, the word of God. Two, people. Every other thing will not pass. Every other thing will not pass. I want to make an investment in the word of God. Two, two businessmen met in a hotel lobby in the U.S., and that meeting led to the Gideon Society being formed. They are not pastors. They understood that hotels do not have Bibles. So they put resources together. 
and they began to distribute Bibles. In the 1800s, they are still here today. Why? When you leave this church or this church leaves this community, will they miss you? Will they miss the church? That's one of the things I say. Are we a nuisance to our society? If only Christians can decide to sweep their house, keep, don't throw corn on the ground because corn season has come, mango has come. If all Christians, all, all Christians decide to do that, I'm sure Bini City will be clean at least 50%. There will not be erosion sometimes because sometimes they fill the gutters with debris. Where am I serving God? Or is Jesus serving me? My wife, is Jesus serving you? Are you serving Jesus? Jesus protects me. Jesus keep my enemies for me. Jesus open door for me. What did you send Jesus again? Eh? Jesus, give me money. Jesus, month is about to end. You have not still brought the money. Jesus, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, go and build house for me. Jesus, money come to me now. Jesus, provide visa for me. I want to leave this country. And Jesus, wait for me in that country I'm going. You, you still continue. Nobody will treat his servant the way we treat Jesus. Are you a Christian? Have you ever asked yourself, how did Jesus become king? He became king. He served his way into it. He died. That on the head, they wrote yod he vave It was a, a, they could not write all his crime. So they wrote the first letter of the crime. They wrote Jesus, the king of the Jews. Yeshua, the king of the Jews. So they could not write it on the tree because you must write the offense of the criminal. So they removed the first letters of each of the word and it became yod he What they wrote there was, this is your God. No wonder the priest revolted. Remove that sign. And he said, what I have written, I have written. You can't effectively erase a servant. Choose today to serve. Serve the ones that are selfish. Serve the ones that are unselfish. Choose to serve wherever you find yourself. You want to be number one? Serve. So that when you get to a place where, they, where work is... It has value. You are no longer working hard. You are having the best life because that's who you are. Save. You don't have a job? Go and save. For free. I told a woman like that here. She went to volunteer. In that place, in that government prostitute, they employed her. She began to sell properties. Took a ton, built her house, raised her children in private universities. And he said, Because I listen to serve. Question I need to ask Where have you retired? Are you a retire, retiree Christian? All you do is come to church, you sit down. After service, I lay. Can I also ask, Where are you raising disciples? We are called to be disciple makers. You know what I hear one of the complaints they do? Pastor, there's, we need to have a program for so so and so. We need to have a program for so so and so. And I say, Pastor, say, can you hear the program? I say, I don't have time more. But I just know. I just know this is what is needed now because people are saying, no, it's the person that is saying. Where can you serve in children's church? 
If you serve in children's church, you will not complain of children's church teacher again in your life. You will not. I'm telling you. People that were criticizing government, when they became part of government, what are they doing? Huh? You criticize pastor. Can I make you a pastor for only two months? One day. Be a pastor. Can we use your house to host a live group? Or the house is too fine to accommodate people? Somebody gave a testimony. I told them. We spent four hours of workers here yesterday within the space. They spent four hours from 8 o'clock to about 12. And I prayed for them. I said, what you've lost in these four hours you'll get. Somebody was owing 30,000 naira. He couldn't get the money throughout the week. He went to sleep and woke up with an alert in his phone. The person that sent him an alert, he was owing the person. And he called the person. I'm owing you. Why are you sending me an alert? He said, I just, uh, you will pay that one later, but this is the one I want to give to you. My brother, I cannot understand what I'm owing somebody. He didn't deduct the money from it. He just said, that's the mystery of God. Rise up on your feet.